Hello, and welcome to this Let's Play of Titanic Adventure Out of Time. I am M. Metro, and um, I'm going to be playing this game with you today. This was released in 1996 by um, a company called Cyberflix, which has been out of business, I believe, for probably at least 10 years now. Um, and this is going to be a point-and-click style of adventure game. Um, this game involves, just so you can get a little bit of understanding, um, we play a character named Frank Carlson, and he, I think, is some sort of secret agent for the British OSS, and, um, well, adventure out of time. He goes back in time to, um, a mission that he was given on the Titanic. Believe it or not, this story says that a spy of some sort, or someone for the OSS, had a mission that was, um something he had to be doing at the Titanic, so that's interesting. I've never played this game before. I've heard of it. Um, I've never actually played it, so this is going to be a blind run. And not only that, but um, I'm playing this with a um, DOS box, and um, the audio skips and is very choppy, which I'm sure you guys hear already a little bit in the background. I've tried to lower the volume a bit so it doesn't bother you guys. So just, just to give you guys a heads up. Um, all right, so let's start the game. Again, today's top story. London has endured another night of German bombing. Most damage was concentrated in the East End. The RAF has... Yeah, just to let you know, that's not the video that's making it choppy and sound like she's drunk and slurring. It's just some reason um, the video, pro uh, video recording software I'm using is making it sound choppy. In Asia... The American fortress at Corregidor is still defiant, but Japanese forces are reported nearing the Burmese oil fields. And that concludes the news summary. We now return you to our music program. Yeah, we don't need that. It gets to be a little annoying, especially... Actually, you know what? Um, Let's change a little bit of the volume here. I'm not sure what that does, but I've been fiddling around with this for over a half hour now, trying to make sure uh, everything sounds okay. Um, let's get subtitles on in case it gets choppy with the uh, audio. Hopefully this will make a difference. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, a little bit of- oh, excuse me. Dialogue. What? All right, well, thanks, lady. Cool, so I haven't paid my rent, which is baller. It's 1942. Um, yeah, so a little bit of background for me. I loved the Titanic, um, the ship itself, not the movie. Um, ever since I was a kid, I really fell in love with it, read a lot of books on it, on the discovery of it in 1985 by Robert Ballard. I even met him a couple times and got his autograph on my books. I was really excited. He was kind of my hero growing up. I was really disappointed when the movie came out, actually, because I was eight when it came out, and I thought it was going to be like a documentary, and I was like, what is this? Leonardo DiCaprio's making out with this chick, and there's, like, gunfights and stuff. That's not authentic. And all my friends were like, oh, God, like, shut up. It's a beautiful story. And I was like, no, <laughs> it's not accurate. Just goes to show you what type of nerd I was. Um, so I'm really into the Titanic. I know it very well. I know the story very well, but um, I've not seen a story like this about it before. La Morte. Well, that does not bode well. Oh, what's happening? Oh, nothing. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so I got fired... Tw nope, almost 20 years ago. Because it's 1914. That's too bad. I had a ticket for the Hindenburg! Wow, okay. Well, clearly I survived it. Can't click anything else on here. Nope. Oh. See here. This isn't about your dedication. Pringle certainly attests to your loyalty. No, your dismissal stems from the Titanic mission. Oh. That failure can no longer be ignored. Especially now. I am sorry. 
but someone must shoulder the blame. The service, you understand. We can't be held responsible. Okay, well, that clock was uh, stopped at, I believe, 2.18, it looked like. 218, 220, that's around the time when the Titanic sank, if I remember correctly. I'm really sorry, again, I apologize about the audio being really choppy. I can't get it to f fix. I've been working on it all afternoon and I haven't been able to fix it, so bear with me. Okay, well, um, mm -hmm, we saw that. Uh oh. That's an air raid. That's not good. Get away from the windows! Why can't I leave? Sneaking out, are you? I want my money. Ah, screw you. <laughs> oh, snap. Well, I guess the landlady's dead too? I don't know. Now I'm going back in time, I guess? Okay. The past forever locked in regret. But what if the past could be changed? Ugh, this audio is awful. Dun dun dun! Wow, they got the dramatism of Titanic before the movie came out. <laughs> nice, there's a ton of uh, icebergs out here in the ocean too. Since the night that saw the end of the world, my world, the service needed someone on the Titanic. They chose me. I was to wait for a signal from my contact, so I remained in my cabin. I left only once. Georgia was on board. Georgia? And that's when it came. There'd be no second chance. It was Sunday, April 14th. Too late, you see, for the Titanic, for me. Okay. What if I met with my contact, prevented disaster? What if the past could be changed? What then? Okay, so that was Frank Carlson, the OSS um, secret agent. Really, really, really annoyed with this choppy audio. That's really too bad. Okay. <laughs> all right. This is intense. Um. All right. Uh, another disc. Okay. Da da da. 30 years ago, 9.30 p.m. All right. All right, so um, I never got this far. I did test out that beginning part a couple times, hoping that the audio would change, and it never did. And um, that's as far as I got, because I was just testing it out. So this is my first time. Oh. Who is it? What do you want? Good evening. Ew. I am Smethels. Your steward. Smethels? And, if I may say so, it is good to see you up and about. Ugh. You've been in your cabin the whole voyage. A touch of the mal de mer, was it? Mal de mer? Well, I speak French, so that means, you know, it's kind of like, you know, seasickness. This guy looks like a zombie with alien ears. Seasickness can be quite unpleasant, especially if it's one's first crossing. Since you haven't been out of your cabin, may I instruct you on how to get assistance while on board the Titanic? Um, well, yeah, sure, why not? Very good. We of the White Star Line hope that your stay on board Titanic is as relaxing as possible. As you explore the ship, please bear in mind the following advice. The mouse is your hands. The keys, your feet. If you find the screen too dark or too bright, Follow the directions on the control screen help panel, or consult your manual on adjusting your monitor. To find the control panel help and other features, click on the life preserver at the bottom of the screen. The control panel has a help button, as well as a quit and save game feature. You may also adjust the volume. Okay. Test the settings by clicking on the black knob. 
You may also switch the theme music on or off. After making any adjustments, click OK to return to your current game. Wandering the ship, if you notice a hand, it indicates something to click on. May I suggest you do so? Several personal items in oh my your room, God. a brown satchel and a pocket watch, are quite useful to you during your voyage. Take them with you. You shall want to converse with other passengers. If you fail to understand them, click on their face. They will repeat their last sentence. The purser. His office is on C deck, just off the forward grand stairs. The elevator, or lift as we call it, has an attendant who can direct you to various sections of the ship. The lifts are located behind the forward grand staircase. Lastly, you may always find me by returning to your cabin, C-73, and ringing the bell to the right of the door. Your correspondence. 2,200 on board, and they all want messages delivered promptly. Even if it is 1912, Electric camel. and the Titanic, the most advanced means of sea conveyance that ever PP or LO? I still have only two hands. Here, a map of the ship for you. Compliments of the White Star Line. I have taken the liberty of indicating your cabin, C-73. Of course, on a Sunday evening at this hour, there won't be many people out. Will there be anything else? Um, actually, who is PP and who is Electric? I mean, what is the Electric Camel, frankly? A young lady. A most insistent young lady. Hmm, okay. The Electric Camel, an exercise device. They say it is good for the liver. I wouldn't know. It's located in the gymnasium, on the boat deck, on the starboard side. That's the right side, in case you had not been informed. No. Bye, Felicia. Very good. Have you unpacked? You'll find your trunk key in your bag, on the bed. And remember your personal effects, your watch and bag. If you require additional assistance, Please ring the bell by the door. Okay. Good night. Bye. Phew. All right. Um, I was going to say something and I forgot. <laughs> that was a really long help introduction thing here. Um, so we got this map. Cool. Um, actually, no, you know what? Doesn't matter. Um, I don't know what happens if you just click it once. But, uh,. My watch. Meet me tonight on the deck. Tell no one, Georgia. Oh, okay. Interesting. Ah, stop. Okay. This reminds me a lot of um, Mist, another game from the mid 90s. A little bit, actually, I think it's 94, maybe 95, it's around the same time. Okay, well, that was really cool. Ah, hors d'oeuvres, oysters, consommé, olga, cream of barley. Ugh, no thanks. Salmon, mousseline, cucumber, filet mignon, lily. Okay, sauté of chicken, lyonnaise. Hmm. That's very fancy. Very nice. Cool. I'm just gonna click on a lot of things. Um, bear in mind. <laughs> oh, can't open my window. Okay. It's too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, since this is my first run through with it, I um, should probably warn you that it might take a bit longer than maybe other people's Let's Plays. Um, 
But if you're new to the game just like I am, this might be what you want to watch because we're figuring it out together, right? I'm gonna need you guys' help, <laughs> probably, with this game. I got my little satchel. Um, yeah. What's in here? A key. That's my key to... what was it again? What do I do with it? Nothing? Oh. Steamer trunk key. Ah, okay. Let's open our steamer trunk. Wait. What happened? Red. Why is it so hard to click on? I have a phonograph. Gold tone. Okay, let's put this here and crank it. Okay, so it's just gonna keep repeating. Okay. Hmm. Got a lot of other stuff to listen to. Don't know what. It's probably the latest jams of 1912. Such jams as, uh, oh, I don't know. My petticoat and my corset are stuck together. That's a terrible song. <laughs> Never mind, I don't know. <laughs> Oh god, okay. So we've got Austria, Hungary, Serbia. Mm, oh yeah, this is before um, World War One. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, France doesn't have, um, you know, Alsace-Lorraine. It doesn't look like they have it. The reason I keep saying things in French and I talk about France a lot is because I come from a French family, so that will explain a lot in these Let's Plays. Okay. Central powers. Mm-hmm. Britain's allies, France, Russia, neutral, yes. Okay, excellent. What is this? Oh god, I don't want to read all of this. Whew. Well, um, I have to read this, so if you want, you can skip ahead a bit, because it's going to take me a while. So yeah, skip ahead if you don't want to read through this, or pause it if you want to read through it even further than I do. Sorry, the music's so bad. So bad. <laughs> I wonder if you can uh, s read this in a British accent, if it'd be more interesting. In fact, peace, tro peace totters on the brink, pushed near the edge of Europe's economic and colonial rivalries in a system of competing alliances. The central powers of Germany and Austria-Hungary stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a looser, more ambiguous association. <laughs> Triple Entente. Hmm. Composing of the Great British, you know. <sighs> God, it's a lot of reading. Britannia still rules the waves, indeed. And trade, and banking, and the realm of ordained self-confidence. Uh, well, getting a little pompous here, Britain. Our chief rival is Germany. That was the case for many people. Her leader, the Kaiser, has doubled her army since 1892. Hmm. I actually, um, in college took a class, I forgot what it's called, it was like Europe 19, 1848 to 1918. Jeez, that was an intense class. It was boring, don't get me wrong, my teacher 
was basically lecturing from notes he had written probably 40 years earlier and he was just repeating the same thing the, every single year. He had not changed any of it. But in a way it was really fascinating to see how much chaos was going through Europe at the time with revolutions and bombings and war. It's kind of uh, coming back to us again almost a hundred years later, frankly. Uh, but anyway. Yep. Okay, so um, if you have a decent sense of um, this era um, of history, you'll know that these were very troublesome times. Um, you had the Tsar um, in Germany, uh, as Rasputin, hey, here we go, talking about it. Um, and the Bolsheviks came and defeated, eventually, um, Tsar Alexander. Killed everyone in his family. It was very insane. Um, yeah, it's the colonialism, imperialism era, so you got a lot of the European countries getting into North Africa, West Africa, pretty much all of Africa. Um... Yeah, so we're talking about all of the problems. There's a lot of problems. Um, yeah, leading to all of this, um, what would later obviously cause World War I. You can read all of this if you want um, to get an understanding of really the world of 1912. People called it the Gilded Age and how it was so fantastic, but in a lot of ways, yes, we were going through industrial revolution and changing of technologies, but at the same time, we had all of this going on. Insane wars, armies, you know, all of this stuff. Yeah, the world watches to see which side will blink first. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Man, well, this is... I wonder if this is going to be more of like a history educational game, because I was not expecting that. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, we will skip that for now, because I do not know what to do with that. Oh, that is the same drawer that I looked at. Fantastic. Um... Okay. Uh, oh, well. Never mind. Okay. Let's actually, uh, I'm lowering, lowering the theme. Okay, why does it do that? No. I want it a little bit lower. I may find this, whatever. I can just turn it off. It's fine deal with a little bit less of the uh, music choppy, you know, being really choppy and stuff. Okay, so we saw the menu. We looked through our stuff. I have an encoder, which is good to know for later. I'm assuming I don't need it right now. Um, PP, whoever that is, <laughs> um, wants to see us. And there's that note about Georgia. Oh, excuse me, I'm yawning. Uh, that also um, we had to see with, because that is our... Um, my god, my mind's blinking. That is our, um, contact. Oh, okay. Can I leave? Oh, that's the bell for him. I do not want to talk to that guy again. Okay. Grand Staircase. Oh yeah, it's just like the game. I mean, <laughs> movie. <laughs> sort of like, um, was it Jack and Rose? Uh, you know, running down here and it's water's coming in and all that. Can I just knock on anybody's door? I'm gonna wake him up. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's do ding dong ditch. <laughs> okay. They didn't see us. It's okay, guys. Alright. Oh, God. Is that Smetherly or whatever? He was creepy. I don't like him. In my first class? Or second? Actually, with my birth looked like first class or second class it could have been second class uh, I used to know all of that stuff by heart I don't want to go to the person's office um PP <laughs> are, are you wondering about there is a card game in progress in the smoking room held by a French gentleman oh well I'm good thanks medals I suggest you contact the importunate Miss Pringle if you're in a hurry, there are lifts for fast ascension and descension. They're behind these stairs. Good night. Why are you so weird? Oh, that's what I was going to mention earlier. It's like, I like when games um, stick to, you know, being immersed in it. And I don't like it 
when games, you know, kind of get out of the world that they're in by saying, click on the mouse button to do this. I mean, I get it. You need to do that because otherwise I wouldn't know. But at the same time, I'm like, it's 1912, Smethels. How do you know what a mouse is? What are you telling telling me to get my monitor to be brighter or darker? Uh, you're creepy, too. Hey, then. I'm the lift attendant, <laughs> and you'll not find one better at taking you where you want to go. Where to? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Um, I'm not sure where I want to go. Ah, I'm sorry that I'm yawning so much. Ah, it's late here. I shouldn't. I should have started this game earlier. Oh, you're smoking on Titanic. Oh my gosh. Suit yourself. Good night. Yeah, 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 sir. Cause um. Just curious. Just let me you know. Checking around. Mm. Hmm. This is actually cool because I've never played a game with a Titanic before, and I've never been in a sort of three-dimensional view of it. I've only seen photos from books and stuff, and um, I didn't really watch the movie all the way through from '97, so yeah, I didn't know too much. But this is cool. Kind of gives you a sense. Excuse me. Um. Um. What it was like up here well you can't scroll up there's supposed to be or maybe it's on the next floor um a really nice clock that is in the in 1985 expedition to the um ship you it was still visible actually and it was really cool the clock had been gone i believe but the statues that were surrounding it remained and that was pretty spiffy <laughs> but yeah they don't have them here that's fine um all right let's look at our map okay so we're in the grand staircase i don't know where Miss P.P. Pringle is. I hope we're not going by real time. Ah, damn it. So I wonder if we have to do things quickly, because that will bother me. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, well, um, for now, um, let's call this a, uh, episode a day. And, um, oops, excuse me. Next time, we will... Oh, oh my god. Um... Uh, we will um, yeah, figure out who these people are and continue with the game. Wow, where am I? Where all of a sudden there's a billion people everywhere. Okay, alright. Um, so yeah, until next time. Peace.